Hi my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy if you're brand new here. I know that these kinds of videos are really helpful for a lot of people, especially for me when I watch other people when they tell about their worst purchases. It kind of helps me decide whether it will work out for me or not and it kind of also gives me a different perspective on why it did not work out for them. Obviously, it's not going to be applicable for everybody. These might be one of your best purchases too, so I'm not saying that they're bad, that you shouldn't get them, but obviously they just don't work out for me personally. You probably will recognize a lot of these items because I probably have talked about them at one point in <laughs> in the past so I don't want to sound like a broken record but it is what it is so at the moment I only have the one bag where I really did feel like it's one of my less successful purchase and it is a Fendi bag and I, I know you guys have heard me talk about it it is the can I bag it is so so pretty it is so well made and it's literally brand new look at the condition of it the main issue for me about this bag is that the color just is very hard for me to match so it is a very neutral color it's just a cream color right um with burgundy trims and it's so pretty like this hardware and everything and this bag itself I mean Fendi bags are not the most popular but at the time this was such a hot bag and I st still think that this style is um, relevant I suppose but maybe less popular than it was and it's still a beautiful style super roomy but the color is just not the right color for me in fact there is a couple other things where it's m mainly because of the color because I like the item but it's the color that doesn't work with my sort of wardrobe um, I tend to gravitate towards darker colors, especially for winter because we get a lot of rain here. And then in the summer, I tend to gravitate towards, even for bright colors, I just pre prefer red. Every time I try to pick it up and try to look at myself in the mirror, it just doesn't go with what I'm wearing that day. And so it's very unfortunate because it's a beautiful bag, hardly worn. Um, it is on my... Everything that I'm going to talk about, um, I have at one point either listed or think, thought about selling. So if you are interested, obviously this is not a sale video, so I don't want to make it into one. But uh, these things, uh, if you guys are interested, just email me. And they are probably also on my Instagram, Fashionably Amy's Closet. Especially you ladies who have uh, issues with shoulders or with weight. If you find... Um, even like a two pounder heavy which is my case this bag tends to be on the heavier side because of all the chains and I know that I can remove it in fact um, I did say that if I were to use this bag I would just remove this chain and use one of those detachable um, straps from Fendi that I have but it's just one of those styles that I don't even like like I said every time I reach for it I just put it back because it just doesn't go and it just yeah, it is what it is. I, I don't have any other reasons besides the fact that it is one of my least successful purchases. That's it for bags actually. I don't really have another bag that I feel like it's very unsuccessful in terms of purchase. I do have a bunch of bags that I don't wear quite as much. So my least worn bags, but they are not going anywhere. They, they will still stay in my collection. They're just my least worn ones and possibly in the far future I might let go of some but like uh, that's in a different category so I'm not going to include it in this video that's going to be a separate video of my least worn items but my second item is a pair of shoes and they are these beautiful Manolos and they are completely brand new as you can see I don't even mind touching the bottom because I have not worn them out every time I wore them it's just to style in a video or to like show and tell I suppose and they are so beautiful like I said before um, in my resolutions video I will refrain to my best ability from buying any more designer shoes especially designer heels I think designer shoes is still okay to buy especially for styles that you know you're gonna reach for often in my opinion, shoes are meant to be worn. Cost per wear is super important when it comes to especially really expensive ones such as these. Um, 
So yeah, I'm still open to buying designer shoes, just not heels because I don't wear heels and I cannot walk in heels for a long period of time. These shoes are gonna be probably just gonna be worn if I have like a wedding to go and it has to go with my outfit and that's the problem. I literally have to like plan around these shoes if if I want to wear these shoes. So that's kind of like a mistake that I made and that I only realized after owning these shoes that I should not I should refrain from buying designer heels, especially heels. Um, I know for a lot of you, you wear sneakers, so like designer sneakers, you get cost per wear, that's perfect. That's what I mean by I'm still open to buying designer footwear, but it has to be styles that I can reach for a lot. So in my case, it would be sandals, it would be uh, slides, so really comfortable ones that I don't have to break in. You almost have to like try it to know and it's... I guess that's the nature of shoes, I guess. You don't know until you walk in them. Um, but just in general, as a general rule, designer heels is a no-go for me, for sure. I'll stick with my just like contemporary brands and like brands that cost between 100 and, tw and 200 maybe. Like it's a more accept acceptable amount of money to spend on something that I don't wear all the time or that I can't wear all the time. So yeah, unfortunately these shoes, beautiful as they are, never worn. Um, it's it's in my collection. I guess they, I haven't posted these on sale, but like, I guess, I don't know. I thought about consigning them, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't want to give up on them just yet. You see what I mean? Uh, and by the way, Manolos tend to, especially on the Hang Yeezy um, uh, style, they tend to run a slightly big, so I do suggest you to size half a size down. So I'm normally a 37 and I took a 36 and a half. Moving on to jewelry, my least successful jewelries are all, I mean, all my Dior earrings. I do not wear them, like I, I love them. Like honestly, when I bought my first pair of Dior earrings, which are the um, tribal earrings, the pearl ones, I still love them, like the look of them, they're so classic. Uh, I love my Jadzia one, the second pair that I got were the Jadzia with stones. They're so cute, cause like, um, it just, it just looks amazing on. These, Anyway, all Dior earrings don't work for me because of the post. I have quite sensitive ears. If the post is thicker than it is, or that I am used to, or that my ears are used to, I, I guess I'm. I guess I can only wear really thin posts, uh, so the the smallest gauge possible. And because Dior earrings tend to have the larger gauge. It really irritates me over time. I can wear them, but I can only wear them for a short period of time. So it's very devastating because, I mean, these ones, these uh, Jadia in uh, the crystal, they're one of my favorite, but I just can't reach for them as often. And that's why I favor my Chanel ones because uh, with Chanel earrings, I always try to get the thinner post ones which are, most of them are made in France, do work out well. The made in Italy ones, sometimes they have a tapered pose and those ones don't work for me either. These are the Jadzia as well, but these are just the plain ones, so with no stones. And these are just the plain age gold kind of color. Uh, same thing with the B on the other side, so they're asymmetrical. Really, really pretty, really beautiful, a statement earring. But these ones, because they are Without the stones, they're a little bit more demure and just easier to dress down, I suppose. Um, so yeah, all my entire collection of Dior earrings are my less successful ones, only because they use a post that does not work well with my body. Just like the shoes. Heels just in general do not, they just don't work for me. And it's less about the design, more so about um, certain aspects that doesn't vibe or doesn't quite jive with my body so unfortunately these are on sale and um those other two i'm kind of holding on to but like like i said i don't reach for them if i do wear them or if i do force myself to wear them i force myself to wear them only for a short period of time which kind of defeats the purpose because i don't want to have to limit myself to wearing them only for a short amount of time. I want to be able to just wear them for as long as I could. 
like even these earrings which are quite large um, but because they're still on the lighter side for a large earring i can wear them for six hours straight and have no problems with it i mean because they are large and they are dangly heavier earrings they do tire you out but it doesn't irritate me it doesn't like make me not able to wear earrings again the next day so these give me that issue like if i wear these for six hours one day the next day i can't wear them anymore and i can't even wear other earrings so that's the problem with dior um which is why for me dior costume jewelry is no more more accessories and they are sunglasses you probably already heard me talk about them the reason why these are less successful is because they are the acetate ones without nose piece i mean how cool are they so these ones are from karen walker and then they have this really signature arrow on the side and they're just really kind of just like very classic cat eye and super well made um i just don't reach for them because at the end of the day i need a nose piece for my flatter asian profile and uh, these even though they're so like in terms of acetate type of glasses because they are really well made these are the celine ones and they're like really iconic celine uh shaped eyeglasses and very neutral as well they cover your face they're just i mean they're amazing but they just fall off my nose very often especially in the summer if you i mean typically you wear sunglasses in the summer and if you're sweating even just a little bit they start sliding off and that's like it's just annoying for for me to have to adjust them constantly even the ones with nose piece they do slide too but they slide a lot less and they just they put for a lot longer before i feel like they weigh me down or anything like that so unfortunately again these sunglasses have not reached for them they are beautiful like all of these things that i'm showing you they're beautiful but they just are less successful for me and so they become part of my worst purchases my last two items are ready to wear and it's so sad anyway one of them is this balma um blazer in this beautiful blush pink color and it's so pretty every time i put it on i'm like oh it's so beautiful but i i never wore it out i probably should have stuck with a white color because i really wanted the white initially so i shouldn't have settled and bought a pink so never settle when you buy something <laughs> at least for things that are so expensive don't settle uh, for more inexpensive things sometimes it's okay to settle it's fine sometimes you might even love it more than you thought but for an expensive ready to wear piece like this i mean these are i mean these are notoriously expensive they are super good quality and very well made and it makes you look like a million bucks for sure but the color itself is just not i mean it still works with my skin tone but it's just like it's just one of those things where i should have just went with white because i wanted white and uh the first time i tried on a white one it was like in a kind of a tweedish material it's not quite tweed but it's kind of like a heavier material that um i should have just i should have just stuck with that one at the time i did not buy it because it was kind of like i was not ready to get it at the point at that time yet so when this came up and i think it was in the sale like it was a little bit less expensive than the regular price so i just jumped on it but to be very honest i've only worn this in videos which quite frankly is sad um I will try to make a point to wear it more often hopefully but i do have two other ones that i do wear more the red one and the black one those ones for sure i do wear but this pink one only worn it in videos which i'm sad to admit it's true um so yeah we'll see how it goes if i do end up wearing it i will wear it if not i might have to consign it i don't know it's still i mean it's brand new so it's so sad i i will try to i will try my best but at this at the same time i just don't know i mean i 
I just should have gone with white. Another piece of ready to wear, I guess this is not quite luxury luxury, but it is still quite expensive, is a winter coat. So, I mean, look at the color. It's so beautiful. Um, camel is just a, a staple in almost everybody else except my wardrobe because I don't know why this camel color I think it looks okay right now on camera but in general when I'm makeup less which is 95% of the time I don't wear makeup it just washes me out so terribly and it makes me look sickly because I already look sickly without makeup so when I bought this color I just immediately regretted it because it's just a color just that doesn't work with my my skin tone it just clashes making me look sickly so it's a question of color again i mean this is a beautiful uh camel hair coat it's full camel hair and it's like the stedman coat that i love so much from aritzia but i hardly reach for it again i mean i i probably took i probably wore it like two times uh the winter that i bought it and it's <sighs> that's why color is an important part like tone and color like warm tone and and cool tone and even just the color itself even if it's like a camel i need to go with really dark camel so like a really uh the the one that i bought um, very recently in my past video in my just the video before that in my spring haul that one is perfect because it is in a tone of color that really first of all doesn't wash me off it contrasts pretty well with my face even without makeup and second of all just the color just matches more with everything else that i own in my wardrobe not just what i'm like on my skin so again this is just one of those that um should have known better should have just stuck with what i thought initially that i should avoid camel like light camel color um dark camel color works but light camel is very very tricky for me um i don't know if you can tell but just just imagine no lipstick no no like mascara no blush it really really does wash me off in terms of worst purchases these are it for now these are literally the only things that are sitting in my closet that are literally almost untouched if ever i tried to rotate them but it's so hard because i just favor my other one they're more comfortable they suit my lifestyle they suit my color palette a bit more so that is why anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, i'm wearing the same outfit as my last video um but it is a different day that i'm filming this but i do want to let you guys know that this is from self-portrait because i always get asked so i'm just gonna say it self-portrait size 8 uk um beautiful tennis bracelet bracelet that i love i will link down below uh beautiful pearl i should try to show you more close up it's a really beautiful bold detail pearl um ring and it is silver ring so very very pretty i will link it down below as well and then of course my chanel um chanel costume jewelry so that is it thank you so much for watching i hope that you guys will decide to subscribe if you're brand new here i would love to have you back please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and found it valuable and i will talk to you guys again very soon bye